yesterday was the first full day of the water outage. So I got up and we were out of water, so the people in Winfield didn't have any way of getting water. So I drove to Kentucky to pick up loads of water. I made three trips down there and back. It took about six hours. And how much water did you bring? Seventy some cases I picked up. Of gallons of water? Gallons and 20 ounce bottles. And you paid for all that? Yes. And then you sold it? We sold it at cost. So you didn't make any profit off of it? No, we really lost money. What do you think the feel, general feeling people had was yesterday? Frustration. I think they're just frustrated. There's, they don't have any answers as to when it's going to come back. They're going to be able to use the water again. Do you think they feel frustrated at all about the way this happened, the way it was then handled? I think people thought their water system was protected, that something like this couldn't happen. How do you feel about it? I thought the water system was protected better than this. What do you think about the fact that they waited between the hours of 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. to tell people not to use the water at all? I think people, a lot of people are, have already used it when they were told. I think that's one reason they were frustrated. They don't know what it's going to do to their bodies. But some people don't care. They go ahead and use it anyway. Why do you think that is? I think that some people think it's just a false alarm. Do you think that's because it wasn't treated with much seriousness at first, or what? Well, no, I think it's because they say they can't taste it or smell it or see it in the water, so they think the water's okay. How do you place this event within the context of life here in the Chemical Valley and the way industry operates in West Virginia? I don't think there's any thing wrong normally with the way business operates in West Virginia. I think to live in a chemical valley like we do, we've really had very little problems with them. This is rare for something like something like this to happen from a chemical lake. Right, so something this major is rare, but what about the everyday incremental damages that people experience from the air quality? They don't I don't think people really know any different. It's been this way all of our lives. But it, it is something that people know is not the healthiest, maybe, air quality. I never really hear any conversations about it until something happens. Yeah. I never think about it. But I used to work at Union Carbide, a chemical company. Can you tell me more about that? Well, the, you know, the, the chemical companies never was real conscious, I don't think, about the environment. They were just conscious about getting caught. And can you tell me a story about that? Yeah, we, I loaded tank trucks and rail cars. And if you spilled a little on the ground, you just washed it and hosed it in the storm drain. Because I worked midnight shift, nobody was out there except they had two co-workers and a supervisor. So if you spilled a little, the supervisor just told you to wash it out, wash it down the storm drain. Did you have procedures for hazardous waste cleanup at the time, and they were just ignored, or did you not have any at all? Yeah, we had procedures. We had a hazmat team, and but, but they if, just didn't use it. Yeah, if you just spilled a couple gallons or something, you're not going to call out a hazmat team to clean it up. Do you feel like they didn't follow other regulations or procedures? No, I think I think it was a lot better when I worked here. My dad worked here. He started in 1947. And the stories he tells about putting stuff in the river, it was real bad back then. But there wasn't anybody to catch them. Did they just dump things directly into the river yeah. back then? Yeah, that's how they invented antifreeze at Carbide. They noticed they was washing a chemical in the river and it wouldn't freeze. So that's how they came up with antifreeze. 
I didn't know that. Yeah, they've just dumped propylene glycol in the river, and they noticed that the river froze, but propylene glycol didn't freeze, so they had antifreeze. That's how Carbide invented antifreeze. That's not a very commonly known <laughs> story. It's true. Um, what would you hope people would take away from this? I think to protect our water system. I mean, we need to protect our water system because this is going to hurt a lot of people.